Greetings, beloved, and welcome to Mayo United Methodist Church. Thank you so much for joining me for worship for Sunday, September 20th, 2020. Just a couple of quick reminders. We do continue to offer the hybrid form of our adult Sunday school Bible study class. That's on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. And you can join either via Zoom or you can come and be in person, socially distanced in the fellowship hall. So that's available for you. I also want to remind you that we have added a second service for at least the next two months through the end of October. There is going to be an 8.15 a.m. outdoor worship service. That's just going to be in our parking lot. We're not using the chapel. Um, that becomes a little too confining with trying to socially distance. So if you could bring your own chair, that'd be great. Um, and then you're welcome to spread out. You'll see where I'm set up when you arrive. And you just find a space uh, in the parking lot or the grass, depending on how wet the grass is that day. And uh, it's about a 30-minute service. It's meant to be casual and laid back, so please be comfortable, be dressed for the weather, whatever that may mean. And please know that if it is actively raining, then we will cancel that worship service. It is designed specifically to be outdoors for, uh, for safety reasons for those that are looking for that, and so we will not be moving it indoors um, in the next two months. It will always be outdoors, or if the weather isn't compliant, then it will be canceled. So please just know that. And I look forward to some of you joining me for that opportunity as we seek to be connecting with God and connecting with one another. As we have gathered here this day to do that, let us begin by calling ourselves into this time and place of worship with verses from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Abraham, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He brought out Israel, laden with silver and gold, and from among their tribes no one faltered. Egypt was glad when they left, because dread of Israel had fallen on them. He spread out a cloud as a covering and a fire to give light at night. They asked, and he brought them quail, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water gushed out, like a river it flowed in the desert. For he remembered his holy promise, given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they fell heir to what others had toiled for, that they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Hear now our opening song of praise, I Will Call Upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, let God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, let God of my salvation be exalted. Let us pray together. Most holy God, we await the touch of your spirit with eagerness. We ask that you enter the lives of each one of us today, refreshing and renewing and healing us with the power of your loving spirit, that we may live with purpose and enthusiasm and courage after the manner of Jesus, who has made us whole. Amen. 
We continue to explore the book of Exodus during this season. We have this week and then two more weeks after this, uh, and then we will be through the first part of the 20th chapter of Exodus, and I haven't exactly decided what I'm doing after that just yet. I'm sort of waiting for the Holy Spirit to lead me in a direction, uh, but I think I will depart the book of Exodus for a little while, and, and we'll journey through something else uh, in, the, in the rest of October as we get into um, then into November. And if you can believe it, we're only like two months away from Thanksgiving. Uh, oh, oh, that tightened my chest a little bit just to even think about that, right? And so let's just take today for a moment to be with the Lord. I just want you to know where we are in the Exodus story. If you've been following along, we did the story of Moses' birth and his adoption by the uh, Pharaoh's daughter. And then we had the moment of the burning bush. And then we had... Um, uh, the moment of Exodus, like the actual Exodus, where the, the Israelites, so the, I'm sorry, we had the Passover, then the actual Exodus following the plagues in Egypt. And um, and so last week we were looking at the moment of the parting of the Red Sea, where the Israelites end up being trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army, and the Lord using Moses parts those that those waters, and they escape to the other side. And so we pick up this morning, or today, right after that moment, and they're, so now they're on the other side of the Red Sea, and the Egyptian army has been wiped away by the water sort of crashing back down. So there's no longer a sense of fear of that impending army. Um, and they haven't really moved on to what comes next, but just sort of taking a moment to catch their breath. And in this moment, we hear um, a psalm. That's P-S-A-L-M. Um, but you can think of it also as a song, S-O-N-G. They're, they're very similar um, in the ways that we think of them in the modern world. Um, but a psalm is, is, can be either in the book of Psalms or found in other places in Scripture um, and is really just considered sort of a, a sung prayer of some kind. Um, and in this moment, it is a song of praise. And it's the response that Moses and the Israelites have to what they've just experienced. And so hear now these words from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 11 and 20 through 21. The Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My heart shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our song of reflection this morning is Rejoice, the Lord is King, matches our text very beautifully. And as you hear Reese play that for us this morning, I just want you to really think, um, especially about the second verse out of this 15th chapter. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. That's going to be our reflection this morning. This is my God, and I will praise him. What does that mean in your life? Hear now this song and take some time to think about that in your hearts and in your minds and in your spirits.
Beloved, will you pray with me? Almighty and wondrous God, we do give thanks and praise for all your wonders and for the ways in which you are in the world and are in our lives. We invite you to be in our lives this morning. We have made space for you. We've made space in time. We have made space in our minds. We have made space in our heart and souls. And we ask that you would pour out your abundance upon us, that we would feel your presence, that your Holy Spirit would work within us and through us, that we would be your disciples. And as we seek to praise you, we would receive all that you would want to pour out upon us and that we would share that in our lives this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are a number of moments in Scripture where people take time to lament and people take time to praise. And I think it's important for us to remember that praying to God is not one thing. Um, it is an ongoing relationship. That, that prayer is, is our, one of our primary ways of communicating with God. And we can do it silently. We can do it with words. We can do it individually. We can do it in groups. Um, and, and throughout scripture, we see this. And again, not every psalm that we see, not every prayer lifted up is a prayer of praise. Some, there are whole, there's a whole book of lamentations. There are psalms of lament in the books, book of psalms. And then there are other books in the Old Testament where we see psalms of lament. And, and a lament is um, a crying out to God when things are not going well, um, whether that's for God to fix it or for God to comfort us, for God to just show up and give us the strength we need to get through something. Um, and, and so those are also really beautiful prayers. And then throughout the Old Testament, there are also psalms of praise, moments where people just feel the need to call out and just say, wow, God. I mean, really, if I had to summarize all of the psalm this morning into just a, a brief phrase, it would be, wow, God, you are amazing. And that's really the basis of praise is something has happened. And it doesn't always have to be as significant as the parting of the Red Sea. It, it can be something what we would think of as very small. But really what it is, is a moment of recognizing that in some way, in some way that mattered to us, that mattered to the people around us, in some way that touched us, God showed up in a moment. And rather than just saying, well, it was nice of God to do that, rather than just moving forward as if that's the expectation that God must show up or the expectation that things should always be happy or should always be right, instead that we would go through what I call the practice of praising, um, Believe it or not, we tend to not actually be very good at praising um, because we don't always notice the moments when God shows up. So part of the practice of praising is the practice of paying attention, is the practice of noticing when God shows up and the various ways that God can show up. Again, it is not always in an abundant miracle. It is not always in a conquering moment. Um, so the way this psalm of praise is set up is, you know, it'd be kind of hard for the for the Israelites to have not noticed the way in which God just showed up in their lives, right? They're trapped, as we talked about last week. God parts the Red Sea, they escape, and then God conquers and wipes out this violent enemy that is chasing them down that surely would mean their destruction. And now they're standing on the other side of the water is like, whoa, I can't believe that just happened. Um, and so the psalm that they construct, you know, that opening line, that, that verse number two, to me really captures... Um, the overarching idea of praise, right? So I want you to hear those words again. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. Now in this moment, they mean salvation in a very practical way in that he literally just saved them. But for us, I think it lays some of that groundwork of this journey of salvation that God seems to have humanity on and the variety of ways that humanity learns to notice the saving grace of God. Um, and so for us to think about moments where God shows up and God is our strength and our might. And essentially for me, that means moments where I am weak, moments where I don't have the strength, where I don't have the might or the ability, and then somehow I, I find it. Um, sometimes we give ourselves credit for that, but I think for us to really recognize in those moments when it just, we get through a tough conversation or, you know, there are days where I get up and I'm leaving the house and I look at my schedule for the day and it just feels overwhelming. There's so much to get done in a day and I don't want to let anybody down. And so I'm just like, 
oh, and as I'm leaving the house, I'm like, okay, God, me and you, like, just, you can get me through this day. I know you can, because I know that I don't have it in myself. And somehow God says, okay, let's find it, you know? Okay, in this moment, you know, and part of it is just focusing on each moment. When we have such a big to-do list, it can be so hard to focus on what we're doing in that hour because we know what the next seven hours contains. Um, and I really struggle with that. And so sometimes God just helps me focus. Um, so God, so the Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. The Lord, the God, my God is my salvation. And then this is the line I just love so much. This is my God, and I will praise him. This is my God. My God is a God of strength and might and salvation and such beautiful things. And I will praise him. And I recognize that he's not just my God. He was my father's God. And that phrase just sort of means a generational God. It acknowledges the God of all ages, right? So it could say, this is my father's God and my son's God or my mother's God and my daughter's God or however you want to think of that. But essentially, this is the God who's come before me. And this is the God who will be here when I am done. This is the everlasting um, and I will exalt him. I will lift him up. I will acknowledge the presence of this God in my life. And then they go on and they describe in verse three, they say, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name, right? So this harkens back to the moment in the burning bush, the Lord is his name, where Moses says to him, well, give me your name. And he says, I am the I am. And so they're kind of taking this moment to acknowledge that. They're saying the Lord is his name. He doesn't even need more of a name because he is the Lord. He is the I am. And for them, because they were facing an army, in this moment, they're taking a moment to praise the Lord as a warrior. That's not the only way that God shows up, right? So for us to think about praising God when we feel like God is a warrior, when God is a rock, when God is compassionate, when God is forgiving, when God is loving, all of these ways um, exist, and we can praise in so many abundant ways. And so then they go on in the next few verses to sort of lift up in specific detail, pretty specific detail, what God has just done so that it can be written down. And essentially so that this moment won't be forgotten. These words would be, you know, sort of remembered and this moment would be remembered. And then what I absolutely love is when they're done sort of saying, this is what God has done for us. Woo, it's so awesome. Then the women that are there, the prophet Miriam, I think it's really important to notice that it's a female prophet because we don't see that very often. So just a little side note, um, but she is part of Aaron's family. She's Aaron's sister. Um, and, and there's a, and Aaron is Moses's brother. We're not really sure if Miriam is also Moses' sister, but we usually, you know, acknowledge her in that way, uh, even though it doesn't say it specifically here. But she grabs her tambourine and sort of rallies the women, and they all grab instruments of some kind, tambourines or anything they can basically make a joyful noise with, right? We heard that in our opening psalm this morning, let us make a joyful noise to the Lord. And they grab their tambourines and they begin to dance. Because the joy within them, the praise that is welled up within them is so big, the words can't contain it. The words aren't enough. And they feel this call to physically move with praise. Now, I am one of the klutziest human beings on earth. I have no coordination of any kind. Not eye and hand, not hand and foot, not eye and foot, right? I'm the kid that went to kick the kickball and would swing my foot right over it. I'm the kid that trips over her own feet. Um, I'm also the adult that trips over her own feet. I'm the adult that goes to walk through a doorway and bangs her arm onto the side because she didn't swing through wide enough. This is your pastor. So the idea of dancing um, in public has never been comfortable for me. Uh, uh, the only times I ever enjoyed that was when I was in theater and I was covered in a costume and, and makeup and felt like I wasn't, it wasn't me dancing, it was my character dancing, right? Um, but, but I still, so even as a person who is not prone to celebratory dance and feeling like I'm good at that or that I look pretty when I'm doing that, it does resonate with me that there have been moments where my awareness of God is so powerful, it can't be contained in this little box. And there's this sense of just, wow, you know, and if that's our dance, if that's all it is, just, you know, 
You're amazing, God. I love you. Thank you for being in my life. That can be a dance. It doesn't have to be ballet or jazz or tap, right? It doesn't have to be a coordinated liturgical routine with with streamers and all kinds of things. It can be. That's a beautiful way of dancing and celebrating as well. But maybe you just do a little jig. Like there are times, right, where I'm so happy. I do a little, probably, like I said, again, not in public, but I do that in my house. You know, I kind of do like a little, a little shake and shiver, you know, Um, have a little fun with that. Those are those kinds of things. And I think we can all relate to that, even if we're not, if we wouldn't consider ourselves dancers or someone who enjoys dance. There's that sense that praise can well up inside us in such a way that we want to move, that it literally moves our physical being, because that's how powerfully God has shown up in that moment. And I just want us this morning, it's not going to be a long message. It's, it really isn't, because the work you need to do is not one that I can compel you with with words. But I really want you to put some time and thought this morning, this week, into the practice of praise. And I'm going to give you just one interesting example from my own life this week. So here's something I've noticed being a pastor, is as I'm preparing for a sermon, inevitably, God sort of says to me, oh, you're going to talk about that this week? Well, here, experience it for yourself then. Um, And it's always this really great reminder of, oh, you thought you were just going to talk about that. Nope, you're going to live it out this week as well. So on Monday and Tuesday, and so just so you know, um, this time of year is a very busy administrative time of the year. There's a lot of paperwork that is being done. Um, I've been asked to fulfill a new position on the conference level. So I'm the new chair of the District Committee of Ministry, and I'm just getting that up and started um, embracing that role. And it is a lot to learn and a lot to figure out. And then there's, you know, everything that we are doing and, um, and still trying to, and doing all of that in the midst of COVID. And so the other thing is, my schedule really hasn't been busy since March. I mean, I, I've been doing things and I've been talking to people, but I will be the first to say that my work schedule was nowhere near as busy from March through August as it would normally be. And so this fall ramp up is what I call it. It it's usually happens, but usually it's only been like six weeks since I was this busy. And this year it's been like four months. And so it's been very overwhelming. And so my list of to-do things this week was very long and really needed to get done. I need to do things well. And so I had this sense of like, okay, Monday, this is what I'm going to do. Then Tuesday, right? Like I had it kind of sorted out. And then on Sunday, as I was moving my car, I went to drop off my dog and then I drove to church. The tire pressure light went off in my car. And I was like, oh, And mine doesn't usually do that. It's not one of those sensitive ones that goes off at the drop of a hat. And so I was like, ooh. So I talked to a couple of the guys at church, and they helped me fill up my tire, which was down to 15, uh, whatever it is, instead of 33 PP whatevers. See, this is beyond it. The wheel was slightly flat. This is what I know. And they, you know, fortunately, uh, one of the guys had one of those air pumps, and so we were able to pump up the air. And I called Mr. Tire, and they said, hey, bring it in tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And I said, great. I said, how long do you think it'll take to like take the tire off? We could see a screw that was in the tread. And I said, how long do you think it'll take to like take the tire off and and patch it and get me going? He's like, oh, probably just like an hour. I'm like, great, no problem. So Monday comes, I'm getting stuff done in the morning. One o'clock, I go to Mr. Tire. And uh, it's right in that parking lot. There's a Goodwill and a dollar store. And I felt like those were safe places to pass an hour because not everything is so expensive. So even though I might spend a little money, it probably wouldn't break my budget for this week. And so I was like, okay. And so I, you know, I was looking at tops and Goodwill and I was, you know, looking through interesting things at the dollar store and I made sure an hour had gone by and I came back and he's like, yeah, so we just pulled your car in. Great. Okay. And so it took two hours for them to fix my tire. And so I lost two hours out of my day, not even just one, when I had planned other things to get done on Monday. But, you know, that was fine. I got, you know, and a lot of the things I'm doing right now, I really need to be in the office for. I can't do them on my phone. But I did the things I could. I answered some emails and made some phone calls. And okay, great. Got my tire. It was patched up. Looked good to go. Sounds great. Awesome. Go off with my day. I went home. I had, you know, a training on Wednesday on Monday night. I had a meeting on Monday night. We did those things. Woo! Awesome. Great. I get up on Tuesday morning. I'm taking my dog to the daycare because I have a really busy day on Tuesday, like just nonstop stuff. I have a morning planned of office work, and then I have a visit, and then I have another training, and then I had another meeting. And so it was like big, busy day, right? And I get to daycare, and my as I'm pulling in, I can I feel like my tire's making a funny noise. And I get out, and sure enough, my tire's flat. 
And, you know, so I drop my dog off. I tell him, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be in your parking lot for a little while while I figure this out. They're like, hey, no problem. And, uh, and then I just started looking at the tire. And I don't have the ability to change my own tire. And I know many people do. And I probably could read the book and figure it out. But fortunately, I have this beautiful thing called AAA, which, interestingly enough, I just signed up for last month. <laughs> I got like a special offer and I was like, oh, that's a really good deal. And I was like, yeah, I probably should have triple A. You know, my car is starting to get, you know, a few years older now. And, and so the dealership doesn't cover things the way that it did. Um, it doesn't have the roadside assistance folded in anymore. I said, okay, I'll get triple A. Well, so I'm standing in the parking lot yesterday and I looked down at the flat tire and the first words out of my mouth were, I mean, you know, nobody was around, but still I went, okay, praise God for influencing me to get AAA so that all I had to do was go on the app and, you know, get somebody to come. And they came in 25 minutes. Like, how amazing is that? It said that it could be up to an hour. And, and then the guy was super nice. And I had this really great conversation. And on top of that, I don't know if you guys remember, but Tuesday morning was a gorgeous morning. It was a little bit chilly, but I love that. I love the fall. I love where I have to start bundling up a little bit. And it was just gorgeous and sunny and blue sky. Um, but I did have to rearrange my entire day because I had everything I had planned for Tuesday morning now needed to be done in Tuesday afternoon. And so, you know, but I called a person and I moved something and people were nice about it. And, you know, I went back to Mr. Tire. I called him and said, yes, bring it in. And they said to me, bring it in and we'll, we'll take a look at it and figure out what's going on and whether you, I'm like, great. And so I thought that meant bring it in and we'll put it, we'll look at it right away. But that was foolish of me. Um, and instead, I got to spend another hour in their waiting room. But listen to this. When I got there, a member of the church who has not yet felt safe about coming back to indoor worship was waiting while they finished up something with her car. And so I haven't seen this person in person in months. And I got to sit there and chat with them for like half an hour. And I was like, wow, God, you are so cool. Like, if I have to sit in a waiting room, thank you for giving me something that felt good to be doing. Like I felt like I was visiting with a member of the church, which was such a better use of my time. And it wasn't like I could go back to Goodwill in the dollar store. I'd just been there the day before. But then I realized that I'd been sitting there for 45 minutes and the person from our church who was there as well finished up and, and left. And so then I chatted a little bit with a stranger and that was really nice. I felt like we blessed each other. So I felt like that was good. But then I realized that an hour had gone by and my car was still sitting in the parking lot. So I went back out and I was like, hey, and he's like, yeah, it's probably going to take us a while to like look at it. And I said, okay, so well, I'm going to see if I can get a ride and go to work. He's like, yeah, you should do that. I said, okay. But friends, if you know me well, you know that I'm not married and I live alone and I don't have immediate family in the area. And we don't exactly live in an area that makes like a taxi or even an Uber, an easy thing to just call on. And so I was like, okay, well, how, how am I going to back to the church for Mr. Tyron? It's a little bit further than I'd like to walk. And I thought, oh, I'm going to call a church member. And I called him. I said, hey, I knew there, this is a person I know is retired. I said, you happen to be home today? They're like, yeah. I said, you do anything right now? I said, no. I said, do you want to give me a ride to the church? And they did. How beautiful is that? They came up and they got me very joyfully, like no guilt, no like, well, I guess so. They're like, yeah, like, let me toss some clothes on. I'm coming up. And so they came up and they picked me up and they brought me back to the church. Um, and then I was doing work there and they went out to get something and then they were bringing something back to the church. And right as they were walking into the building, which was a couple hours later, Mr. Tyre called and said, guess what? Your car is ready. And I was like, wonderful. And so that person could take me right back without making an extra trip. And then I got there and there was no charge because there was just a thing that was leaking that they'd missed the day before. And so they had fixed that. So there was no additional money. I didn't need to buy a new tire. And because when you buy one, you really should buy two. I didn't need to buy two new tires. And free is so much cheaper than two new tires. And I got in my car and I was driving and I was driving back to the church. And I was just like, God, okay, this sucked. Like flat tires, never a part of the plan, never something you're anticipating in your day. And yes, I had to rearrange some things. And yes, I felt like, you know, there were some things I didn't get done the way I really wanted to. And I ended up having to do those later and all. But I was like, but God, as much as this is not what I wanted today, you were amazing. And part of it is you kept my attitude amazing. And that's not an easy thing, friends. My attitude can go down into the dumps pretty quickly and I can get really grumpy really fast. Um, oh, by the way, did I mention there was an, also an issue with the prescription that I take on a daily basis? Um, and so I was trying to figure that out with the pharmacy to make sure that I could get it called in and picked up and calling the doctor's office and all of that. So you know, it's just the minutia of life. It's not being trapped between an army and the Red Sea. And yet it was one of those things where it's just one of those days that can just go to hoo-ha. 
You know, it can just go down the tube so fast. And God didn't let that happen for me. God sent me really great people. The guy who changed my tire, his name was Christopher. So praise God for Christopher. And then I saw a member of the church. So praise God for that. And then I met a really amazing stranger. And so praise God for that. When I was talking to the person at the doctor's office, she was having some tough times about things. And it just so happened that she kind of poured it out to me and I was able to bless that person. I've been praying for her all week and I told her, I said, if you don't mind, can I have your first name? I'd really like to pray for you. So praise God for Tiffany, that God gave me an opportunity to show up for someone else that I couldn't see and I may never even talk to again. And she showed up for me and got me done what I needed. And by the time I got to the end of the day, it had been such a good day. I had gotten so much done despite the whole rearranging. I'd seen people and talked to people that I didn't think I was going to get to see. It was a gorgeous weather day. I didn't get to take a walk outside, which was one of the things I had planned, but I almost didn't care because I got to spend time outside in the morning. That all sounds really silly, but that's the practice of praise. Seeing when God shows up, that's what they're saying. This is my God and I will praise him. And just as I'm wrapping this up, I want to remind you of something. <coughs> Excuse me. Praising God is not God's need. We don't go through the practice of praising God because God has a big ego and needs to be lifted up and needs to be praised. God's going to do God's thing whether we really acknowledge it or not. God's like, this is me. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to keep showing up. But it's for us. The practice of praise, the practice of paying attention, noticing when God shows up. And even if the thing isn't solved, you know, even if we still have to do, right, I still had to call Mr. Tire. I still had to call the doctor's office. I still had, you know, to work the problem. But even if it's just God being my strength and my might saying, it's okay. That really, it's not the end of the world, Amanda. It's a flat tire and a prescription. Like, we can handle this. But there are days where those little things, because you have so much on your to-do list, are exactly the things that shove you over the edge. And so the practice of praise is for us. That's what's really amazing about it, is us remembering to say to ourselves, this is our God and we will praise him because God does show up. God does show up. Even if it's just dropping a person into our lives, even if it's just helping us deal with the minutia of life, that is praiseworthy. And so I really want you to think about how will you practice paying attention this week? How will you be looking for God to show up? And part of that is noticing that simple things that seem like coincidence or just seem like they happen, sometimes we don't give God credit for that, right? Like, so I could have just said, and I had AAA and wasn't that great of me. And then this guy showed up and did his job. And all of that would be true. But I paid attention. And I remembered sitting at my desk a month earlier thinking, should I sign up for AAA? Should I wait? I don't know. And something in me said, you need to have AAA. And how different Tuesday would have been if God hadn't pushed me in that moment and said, go ahead and do this, because that's exactly what I think happened. And how different yesterday would have been without, or Tuesday would have been without AAA. And what if the guy had shown up had just been nasty and rude and said he was a joy? He, I, was, I was glad I met him, and I wouldn't have met him without the flat tire. So many things like that unfolded, and I was just paying attention and seeing it for what it was seeing ways in which there's just these little movements, these little pushes. And that all day long, I felt like God kept bolstering my attitude. Every time I, there was a part of me that wanted to be frustrated, or anything, I felt this thing within me, which I would say is the Holy Spirit rising up and saying, no, that's not what it means to be a disciple. That's not who I want to be. That's not who I want to be in other people's lives. And I just kept rising up. And I was, it was a really great day, even though it wasn't the day I had planned. And I didn't get everything on my to-do list done. That's the practice of paying attention. And as we get better at the practice of paying attention, then the practice of praise is super easy. Because as you start to notice just those little kinds of things, you'll just find yourself more often being like, God, you are awesome. And that's what a psalm of praise is. It doesn't need to be eloquent. You don't have to write it in ancient Hebrew poetry. All right? Just taking a moment and saying, you are my God and I praise you you. Or I like to say, God, you're awesome. You can do it any way you want. You can dance. You can do a little celebration, however you want to do that. You can grab your tambourine or any musical instrument and just rock out. Maybe you want to put a song on your iPod or rock it out in your car. However you want to praise God in that moment is fine. But remember that it's our opportunity to just see God at work. That's why the practice of praise is so important and that we can do it amongst challenges. We can, do, we can be praising even when we're not happy. 
even when things have been very tough or very hard, when we see God show up, we can still say, praise you, God, I love you. And so that's my challenge to you this morning. Beloved, this is our God. Let us praise him. Amen. As we think about the practice of paying attention this week and the practice of praise, um, I've been having a lot of prayers come my way for victims of Hurricane Sally. Uh, we saw from uh, one of our families this week that they have family friends that lost everything, their house, their cars, they had to be rescued. Um, the husband is deployed, so he's serving our country and isn't able to be home with his wife and his teenage children. Um, I heard from our district superintendent that she has family and friends in Alabama where they were being hit. Um, I heard from family and friends um, that have, sorry, from family and colleagues that have family and friends out in California, in the Long Beach area, that have family in the Seattle, Portland area where some of those wildfires are just so bad. And while they're not in a place where they're in danger of the wildfires, the air quality, if you've never been anywhere where wildfires burning, it is oppressive. Um, and so just, you know, a lot of big things sort of happening in our world in addition to some ongoing things like COVID and presidential elections, um, you know, and, and social justice and, and racial justice conversations. And just continues to be a time where there's a lot happening. There's a lot of people that can use our prayer. And so I think the practice of praise would be even more important, um, that we would see the people that respond you know, the, the people that are fighting the fires, um, the people that are, you know, driving down to where the hurricane hits, the rescuers that saved that family. Um, as, as much as we grieve the loss of their home and their cars, we praise that they were saved because they might have been lost as well. And, and that's a loss that we can't help with. And, you know, we can't replace people. Um, and so offering up those, those types of praise and those types of prayers. And if there's nothing else, then offering up praise that we do have the ability to reach out to God. Sometimes that's as much of a praise as we have, God. I know you're there, um, and, and it's me again. And I have these people, or I have this in my life, and, I, you know, thank you for being there. And, and we just try to put things in God's hands. So I hope you'll be practicing that this week. I hope in this moment you will um, grab the joys and concerns list that came out on Thursday. Uh, and perhaps be spending some time in prayer for each and every person on that, and maybe even take a moment to lift up some praises that you can find. Beloved God, we know that you are aware of every person, every one of your children, we lift up to you, those in particularly this week, that have been impacted by hurricane and wildfire and other natural disasters. We call them disasters. I think intellectually we understand. They are part of the ways that the world deals with renewing itself, perhaps even part of the way that your creation protects itself. But when we find ourselves in the path, just feels like a disaster. And it doesn't matter what we understand in our mind. It matters what we feel in our souls. And our souls are broken, thinking about people that have lost lives, that have lost property. And so we just ask that you would continue to show up, that you would continue to be our God. We do praise you. We praise you for a world with triple A and really nice people that will come and change our tires. We praise you for birthdays and anniversaries. We praise you for bumping into people in waiting rooms and having a chance to reconnect. We praise you that life is busier because we aren't just sitting home, but instead we're starting to live again. And that feels good even when it feels overwhelming. Please keep showing up in our lives, oh God. We will seek to keep noticing. We will seek to pay attention and to lift up our praise to you as we continue to plead that you would pour out your abundance upon all persons in need and that they would feel our love for them flowing through you, flowing across time and space. It does not matter if we do not know their names or if we've ever seen their faces, but we lift them up to you 
And we ask that you would take this love, this grace that we offer up, our compassion, and pour it out upon those who need it this day. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, I send you forth into the world. May you be disciples of Christ this week. May you feel the presence of God. May God show up in rich and amazing and abundant ways in your life. And may you practice paying attention so that you might notice God and give thanks to God. So that you might lift up yourself with God. God is your strength. God is your might. God is your salvation. He is our God. Let us pray to him. Hail him!